This web clip provides an overview of evidence that the pulvinar nucleus of the thalamus plays a critical role in routing information through cortex. My name is Yuri Salman and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. The fundamental problem that we face is that there is too much information in our cluttered environments for us to simultaneously process it all in detail. So we need to selectively transmit the important information across the cerebral cortex and filter out the irrelevant information. Evidence suggests that a key mechanism to do this involves modulating neural synchrony between cortical areas. For example, let's look at the left panel. Up top, we have an oscillation in neural activity in area 1. Below, we have an oscillation of neural activity in area 2. Now here we have an effective phase relationship such that action potentials from area 1 arrive at the peak of excitability of area 2. And this gives rise to increased efficacy of information transmission. If we look at the right panel, here we have an ineffective phase relationship. Now action potentials from area 1 arrive at a trough of excitability in area 2. This gives rise to reduced efficacy of information transmission. So we can selectively route important information by appropriately synchronizing cortical neurons. The question is, how do two cortical areas synchronize? Here we will consider two possibilities. One option at top is that direct interactions between areas 1 and 2 gives rise to their synchrony. An alternative option is shown below. Here, a third area, directly connected with area 1 and area 2, gives rise to their synchrony. And the brain anatomy provides insight into which of these options operates. Here we have a lateral view of the macaque monkey brain from David Van Essen's lab. At the back of the brain, here in purple, we have the primary visual cortex, or V1 where information from the eyes first arrives. Next, in rows, we have the secondary visual area, or V2, and so on. And over the past decades, neuroscientists have recorded neural activity from these areas and traced connections between these areas to generate intimidating looking wiring diagrams like this. And this has given rise to important models of cognition and perception. However, missing from this picture is the higher order thalamus. Imagine we have a glass brain and we can look deep into the core. Here in gray, we have the thalamus. Now, information from the eyes travels to the first order thalamic area, the lateral geniculate nucleus, and then to V1. However, most of the thalamus receives little or no input from the sensory periphery. This so-called higher-order thalamus receives major input from the cortex and provides major output back to the cortex. And the largest of the higher-order thalamic areas is the pulvinar, shown here in pink. Now let's see how the pulvinar fits into our cortical wiring diagram. Here's the pulvinar in pink, and for orientation in the cortex, in purple here we have V1, and rows we have V2 and as you can see there are direct connections between them. Now the pulvinar is connected with both V1 and V2 forming an indirect pathway between these two areas and generally speaking any directly connected cortical areas will also be indirectly connected via the pulvinar. Thus the pulvinar is well positioned to influence cortical synchrony and information transmission. Now, to test the hypothesis that the pulvinar controls cortical synchrony, we simultaneously recorded from areas V4 and TO two interconnected areas in the ventral visual cortical processing stream, as well as recording simultaneously from the pulvinar while the monkey performed an attention task. In this task, the monkey depressed the lever to bring up a fixation point. Next, a spatial cue appeared and the monkey had to pay attention to the cued location across the delay period to identify the upcoming target 
in a stimulus array, which contained barrel and bow tie shaped stimuli. If a barrel shape was cued as shown here, then the monkey released the lever immediately. If a bow tie shape was cued, then the monkey released the lever at a later time. Before we can test our hypothesis, we first have to show that cortical area is synchronized during our attention task. Here on the x-axis, we have the frequency of neural oscillations, and on the y-axis, we have the amount of synchrony between cortical areas, here measured as the coherence between local field potentials in cortical areas V4 and TO. The higher the coherence, the greater the synchrony. The blue curve shows the synchrony between V4 and TO when attention was away from the receptive field of recorded neurons. And the red curve shows cortical synchrony when attention was at the receptive field. Now, attention increased synchrony between V4 and TEO, especially in the 8 to 15 hertz range, predominantly what is known as the alpha band. In fact, attention also increased the synchrony between pulvinar and V4, shown in the middle panel, and attention increased the polvona TEO synchrony as shown in the right panel. What we really want to do now is show that the polvona causes the cortical synchrony. To do this, we calculate the Granger causality. The Granger causality is based on the idea of temporal precedence. For A to cause B, A must come before B. For example, imagine that the green curve is the polvonar activity and the orange curve is the cortical lab activity. Now, if the past activity of the pulvinar helps predict the cortical activity, then the pulvinar is said to Granger cause the cortical activity or have a causal effect on the cortex. So here are the Granger causality results. Along the x-axis, we have time across the trial of our attention task. And along the y-axis, we have the frequency of neural oscillations. The Granger causality has been color-coded, such that red-yellow indicates a strong influence of the pulvinar on the cortex, in this case the example is V4, and blue indicates a weak influence. What you can see is that when the cue draws the monkey's attention to the receptive field of recorded neurons, there was increased pulvinar influence on the cortex throughout the delay period until the target. And importantly, the pulvinar influenced the cortex in the same 8 to 15 hertz frequency range at which cortical area is synchronized. Now below, in contrast, you can see that when attention was elsewhere, there was little or no pulvinar influence on the cortex. Because of common cellular mechanisms and thalamocortical connectivity patterns, a general function of higher order thalamus may be to control cortical synchrony thereby selectively routing important information across the cortex.